Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here, down here in LA, where Activision has officially unveiled Call of Duty Black Ops multiplayer. I've got Daniel Suarez, the game's executive producer, here to tell us a few things about it. Daniel, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Sean. Great to be here. So, one of the big features that you guys unveiled tonight was this new training system for the game, which sort of, you know, takes players as, and eases them into the competitive multiplayer experience. Call of Duty multiplayer has grown a lot more elaborate over the past few years, and this sort of, you know, helps people ease into it, right? Well, it's cool because combat training is not just a training device, it's actually its own unique game mode as well. So what combat training is, is basically a, a new multiplayer progression path. It is not at all tied to the competitive progression path, so you can play both. And the way that it works is that you basically go into multiplayer, you can pick the number of bots that you're playing against, you can actually play also co-op, which is a cool feature in and of itself that I'll get to in a second. But basically you can go in, you can get a feel for the map, you get a feel for the guns, you can try out different guns, see what works for you, and you're just playing along. And it actually feels like you're really out there in the wild playing multiplayer, but it's, it's not as frustrating to those people that are getting new into the, into the system. Also, as you're playing combat training on the basic modes, you are getting hints about things that are happening when you're dying. So it'll detect and say, hey, you know, use your grenades to do this. Use this type of weapon to do that. This is a good location for this. And you'll also see that coming up on the menus as you're playing in-game. Well, let's talk about the co-op component to it. If we were at my house, we could play combat training together. We could play split-screen combat training. If you're at your house, I'm at my house, and I'm like, hey, you want to just sh shoot around for a little while? We can go into the lobby, start up a co-op match of combat training. And then we can invite all your friends to join us as well. It's a great warm-up before you get into Call of Duty multiplayer. I've always found it takes me one or two matches to kind of, you know, work out the kinks. I've done combat training and then run into the match, and I'm doing my best I've ever done because I've kind of I've oiled up, so to speak. Now, uh, after you guys showed off combat training, you sort of uh, made our jobs a lot easier by distilling the presentation into a simple theme, customize, create, and compete. Talk to us about the three pillars of the game and what they mean for Black Ops multiplayer. So, traditionally with Call of Duty, you add more. More weapons, more maps, more killstreaks, more perks. And we did that this year, but Call of Duty's become such this, this giant sort of mass phenomenon with players around the world. We needed to do more. The expectations have been set very, very high. So the team said, okay, where are the areas that we really can expand on? And we were looking at a bunch of different things, you know, people making videos on YouTube with all the sort of crazy stuff they were doing in terms of their kill streaks and their night kills and all that kind of stuff. And they were seeing people saying, look, I want to have more identity in the game than just the emblems and the, and the call tags that I unlock. So we really sort of focus on those three things. The compete really gives you the essence of the combat training, the wager match, and all that kind of stuff. So Dan, the, uh, the Call of Duty series sort of made popular this notion of experience points in a first-person shooter, working your way up that level tree, unlocking things like that. Now you guys are sort of taking it in a new direction this year by adding currency, this whole economy to the game. Explain to us what that system is all about and how the idea originated. Well, currency really is all about player choice. This is how the idea originated. We, we wanted to give players more choice in how they ranked up. And it really is an extension of that kind of, you know, I don't want to say it, but RPG experience. You know, that's that's what experience was all about, XP was all about. But this is a, it's another layer of that. You know, you still have XP, you still rank up, you still unlock things. But instead of unlocking everything in the game, you now unlock things by category. Once you've unlocked a category, you can spend your currency on anything in that category. You know, we've got contracts, which is sort of your investment type of uh, uh, mechanic. We've got wager match, which is your gambling mechanic. And gambling is sort of a, that's sort of a, a natural extension of the, of the current system for us. We love gambling. We're big gamblers. We love going to Vegas. You know, and that, we want to bring that excitement to Call of Duty Black Ops. And that, I think, is one of the most, to me, exciting aspects of the game and the currency system is wager match. Yeah, let's go into a little bit of, a little bit more detail on the whole gambling uh, mechanic because, like you said, that is one of the most exciting elements of the game. How does that work? Exactly how much are you risking in these games and what's the payoff? Well, you can risk really as much as you want. We have, we have kind of low buy-in games, which are games you can play with your friends, um, but then we have high stakes as well. So if you're, the, if you're really hardcore and you want to put all your money on the line, or not all of it, tons of your money on the line, uh, you, can, you, know, you can take that risk. And they're, and they're very simple. I mean, the designs of, of, these, of these game modes are very simple. For example, one in the chamber, you sp everybody spawns in with a pistol, they get one bullet and they get three lives, and that's it. Once the three lives are done, they're done. And they have to watch everybody else own everybody else, you know? So, um, you know, when you shoot somebody, you take their bullet. But if you miss, now you're without a bullet. 
And it, it, you know, it creates a lot of interesting dynamics and tactics. Some players will just melee so they can collect bullets. And then you get, so you get these really tense kind of one-on-one -on -one battles where you think the guy is done, but he actually has four bullets in his chamber. So it's stuff like that. It just creates a really interesting dynamic because it's the, it, because the rules are so simple, these game modes. That's the Cold War right there. Subterfuge, yeah. sneaking around, acting like a spy. Exactly, yeah. The customize really allows you to play with the emblem editor. Create your own emblem, make your own, uh, create a class, make the game you want to play. So customization was a big thing for us. Uh, the emblem editor is uh, one of my personal favorites because I sit, I sit around and make emblems all day long. Not really all day long, but you know. Um, but you know what I love about the emblem editor is that nobody has the same emblem. Everybody's emblem is unique because you've got up to 12 different layers you can select. Within each layer is an, is an, is an icon. You can scale that icon, you can rotate it, you can um, change the color on it, you can set it to either outline mode or full, full fill-in mode. And so it, it just creates tons of creates opportunities for creativity for players. And then lastly, uh, create, make your movies, and, and that was for us one of the new things that when we saw it, we're like, wow, this is going to open up a whole new avenue for people when they can actually make their own Call of Duty movies. So theater was part of our creation pillar. We wanted to give players the tools to create and kind of do things that were unexpected. You know, we kind of designed the game a certain way and we give them tools. And once they get the tool, they, they do things that we have no idea, that we had no idea that they're going to ever actually do with it. And the theater was one of those features where it was just like, we want to give players the tools to make their own films, be their own filmmaker. We wanted to bring this kind of technology to the masses so they don't ha you don't have to have a capture car, you don't have to have an editing so any kind of editing software. It's all in game. You, everybody has this, 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 this feature. So, um, you know, for us, the theater is really a way to give players the tools to be creative. Um, any game that they play, it's recorded to our servers. They can go back, they can watch it. They can even watch it with their friends in the, in the theater lobby. Uh, they can they can edit clips. We have transitions between clips. Um, you can view uh, any person's perspective, any player's perspective from first person to third person. You can also go into free camera. So you, you can just you can kind of tell like this is going to give the machinima community a ton of tools to work with. It's also going to give just the casual player a way to make their greatest hits reels or whatever you know whatever they want to do. It's going to give the competitive community a way to observe and view other uh, the games they've played to see how other players play in those matches. and They can learn from their mistakes. So we're, I'm super excited about this feature. Cool. Now, uh, obviously, that sounds like a very cool feature. Another cool feature that's going to be of interest to PC players is that you guys recently announced mod support and dedicated servers. How did you guys arrive at that decision? How did we arrive at that decision? A very, very vocal community. We want dedicated servers. We want mod tools. Uh, there's a lead at Treyarch named Caesar, who is the sort of the advocate and the main guy who pushes everything for PC. And from day one, he was like, look, we need to do this. This is critically important for the PC community. And he has been really their advocate from day one. So that was one of the things, really, as we were developing Black Ops, we knew we were going to support it. All right, Daniel, thank you very much for your time. If you could just finish us off by letting the very few people left in the world who don't know when Black Ops is coming out, the game's release date. So Call of Duty Black Ops comes out November 9th. So we will see you guys on the battlefield. Thank you. There you guys have it. That's your look at Call of Duty Black Ops. Keep an eye out for more coverage.